Hey RMX fans, it's Pulse with Pioneer and I'm giving you a walkthrough on installing and using the plugins for the RMX 1000. Uh, first thing to do is download the latest version of the plugins. As of this video, this is 1.1.0. And uh, when you install, make sure you have the RMX connected by USB, otherwise it will give you an error and tell you to restart. Click through the installation. It just takes a couple of seconds. You may have to enter your password. and then you're finished. Now the AU and the VST both install into the default system plugin folders and uh, provided you've got those set up properly in your software you should be okay. Um, I'm going to show you Ableton Live because that's what I've got. I don't have Logix and sorry I can't show you that. Uh, under the file folders here in Ableton Live you have uh, use system plugin fol the plugin system folders and if that's turned on you're okay. If you're using custom folders you can have those enabled as well but the, uh, the plugin does install into the, the default um, operating system folder. So that's where it will be located and found by the software. While you're here in the preferences, you can check the MIDI sync. I have the RMX configured to track input on, and that's a good thing so that you can actually see the, uh, the results in the software. Now you can notice here in the plugin devices that I have the RMX uh, plugin shows up. You can drag and drop that onto any audio channel, and it will open up a little window. It even tells you which channel strip you're connected to with that particular window. I'm going to close that one off and I'm going to add a second track, audio track here. And you can see that I have at the bottom of the screen my RMX plugin on channel one, but not on channel two. So I'm going to add one to channel two as well and I'll show you what happens once we've got two of them. Here you can see channel two audio. Now if I go and add a music file here to one of my clips, I can then load that track up and to get the, the main window back up if you've lost it press the little wrench icon on that plugin and you can see it here. Now the audio levels will bounce around in the software window but not on the hardware itself. All of the hardware transactions are translated directly into the software so you rotate the knobs and it rotates the knobs on the screen. Press the buttons and you'll see those light up as well. Now the cool thing of course about this is you'll notice that the timing shows up on anything that has any parameters and it shows you what the, the value is and what the, the function of that knob is. For example over here modulation triangle. And over here I can see that I, my break is currently, or release effect is currently set to echo. I toggle the hardware switch, says vinyl break. And when I pull the lever you'll see the value will change here. So it actually shows all that information on screen while you're using the hardware. Now, for those who are using multiple channels worth, it's important to note that you have this cool button to plug and play. If I were to, say, turn all of the knobs down in this window and disable my plug and play, Bounce. then go over to Audio 2, open that window, Bounce. now all of the button knobs are turned down. Well, if I turn these ones all the way up and turn my plug and play off here, go back to Audio 1, you can see that it did not move these ones because my plug and play was turned off. If I happen to turn these back on, turning the knobs because their values were left up near the maximum will not affect them until I reach the minimum value where I left them. So it's a software pickup. So that prevents you from accidentally changing the parameters you know, drastically just by rotating the knob or pushing the button. So that's the basics on using the uh, RMX plugin. If you guys have any questions, do come and hit us up in the forums. I'm Pulse with Pioneer.